Good afternoon, everyone. We start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the earth and waters on which we are all on today. We also acknowledge all traditional custodians of the lands and waters throughout Australia and Oceania, and we pay our respects to them and their cultures and elders, past and present. Particularly recognising, of course, that we are in Reconciliation Week. Dear all, thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Alex Gaffakin and I'm an Anglican from Sydney. And today I'm, I'm greeting everybody from Australia, New Zealand and friends from as far away as New Caledonia. This ecumenical prayer has been organised by the Focolari movement and we are here to pray for unity amongst Christians and reconciliation in the world. Divisions among Christians have existed for many centuries. This causes great pain and is contrary to God's will. We believe in the power of prayer. Together with Christians all over the world, we offer our prayers as we seek to overcome separation. The resources for this year's Week of Prayer for Christian Unity have been prepared by different Christian churches in Malta. The history of Christianity in this small island nation dates back to the time of the Apostles. According to tradition, St Paul, the Apostle to the Gentiles, reached the shores of Malta in the year 60. The narrative describing this eventful and providential episode is conveyed to us in the final two chapters of the Acts of the Apostles. This text signals the beginning of Christianity in Malta, a small country made up of two main inhabited islands, Malta and Gozo, as well as other islets, at the heart of the Mediterranean Sea, halfway between the southern tip of Sicily and North Africa. This biblical land lies at the crossroads of societies, cultures and religions. Our prayers and reflections today and during this year's Week of Prayer for Christian Unity are centred on the hospitality shown by the islanders towards those who had just been shipwrecked. Quoting, they showed us unusual kindness. May the love and respect we show each other today as we pray for Christian unity be with us throughout the whole year. May we go from here to show this unusual kindness to visitors to our country who often arrive by boat, be they migrants, refugees, asylum seekers, or merchant seamen and women. During the next hour, we will have prayers and reflections, and we're delighted that we have represented here people from the Anglican, Catholic, and Egyptian churches. And now we will have a short reflection from the Anglican Bishop, Philip Hogan from Melbourne, who is the president of the National Council of Churches in Australia. Well, grace and peace be with you all. It's lovely to be sharing this time with you. I told one of our sons, Nick, that I was part of this Focolare service. And like all members of our family, he has the fondest of memories of the connections we've had as a family with Focolare. He said, well, wow, they're such lovely people. So um, that's, the, that's the sentiment towards Focolare in our family from various experiences. Let me just offer three very brief reflections, very succinct. First one, when those dear people in Malta chose this text, uh, they weren't to know that it would now be so relevant as we go through this pandemic, the necessity to have a, a, a simple trust in God that we see displayed in the Apostle Paul and very much in Chiara Lubick's influence to us, that essential and simple trust in God. And at the same time, uh, the necessity for us to practice unusual kindness amidst the communities that are quite anxious about the future. 
So it's all very apt towards us today. The second reflection, this Pentecost weekend, one of the inspirations of the spirit uh, that we've been to come aware of has been the encouragement for us all to uh, share how our spiritual practices help us to have a good intention, to have a loving and a holy intention, to try and draw uh, the line more clearly between whatever is our spiritual practice and how it helps us to be people whose thinking, whose words and whose actions uh, lead, to good in, lead to good intentions and good outcomes. And I've been part of some wonderful conversations as people have shared their spiritual practice, be it various forms of mindfulness, uh, be it the uh, imaginative exercises, people entering into the gospel stories, placing themselves in those stories, imagining there how they re would respond, uh, how they would respond to Jesus' questions. And over time, thus taking on the mind of the Saviour as uh, more imbibe imaginatively uh, those gospel stories. Um, and for others and for myself particularly, uh, mantric meditation, the Jesus prayer tradition, for my kind of temperament, the benefit of being able to come back to Jesus, have mercy, Jesus, have mercy. Uh, the mystery of the relation between name and presence, as one says the sacred name, becomes aware of presence. Uh, the way that that prayer becomes one that kind of prays in us by the grace of the Lord Jesus. And also practically how when thoughts are taking me in a direction that isn't healthy, how I can uh, climb back out of that by re repraying Jesus have mercy, the power and the beauty in the name of our Saviour that, that brings us back to unity and uh, thus to the better intention uh, that would lead to thoughts, words and actions which are, are good and beautiful and kind and, and truthful. So we've been sharing around spiritual practices and that line of sight to our intentionality in daily life. And the third little reflection, my first contact with Focolare uh, was at the United Nations in Geneva. And um, that really uh, leads me to say, in this period ahead, into what's called the new normal, uh, we have to become very unselfconscious advocates. Um, a lot of the old normal, let's be clear, was completely crazy. Uh, we were pumping carbon emissions into the atmosphere, causing global temperatures to rise, uh, leading in time to the extermination of every species, ourselves included. We have security systems still, which are based on weapons of mass destruction. Uh, this is this is not normal behavior. This is crazy behavior. So in the period ahead, building out of the unity we've been able to establish within the Christian family across the globe, we have to be unselfconscious advocates. Next year is a big year. Two big events have been deferred to next year. The next UN Climate Change Conference and the Convention on Biodiversity. And also, there's, a, there's before the... the United Nations, the convention to get rid of all nuclear weapons, just needs a few more nations to ratify it, to sign up to it. There are matters like this that will make the new normal actually more humane, more loving, and it would be for us acts of unusual kindness were we to be able to move the global family through the atmosphere we create through good intentions into the kind of advocacy that makes for healthy minds and for a healthier planet. So I think uh, our ecumenical movement is an end in itself, but it's also got a purpose, a purpose for the, for the God's whole creation. And uh, so I leave those thoughts with you about spiritual practice, the subtle level, uh, through to that um, encouragement towards our shared advocacy to make the planetary life safer and more beautiful according to God's purpose and God's design. And I think having um, said those few things rather rapidly, now I'm to offer a little prayer. So I'll offer you um, a little prayer which has the response for Pentecost, come Holy Spirit, come, as we make our way further into our worship. 
so let us pray. So we pray, come Holy Spirit creator and renew the face of the earth. We pray together, come Holy Spirit, come. We pray, come Holy Spirit, counselor and advocate. Touch our lips that we may pray aright and proclaim your word. We pray together, come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, power from on high. Make us, all of us, all of us gathered today, agents of your peace and ministers of your wholeness. We pray together, come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, giver of life, breathe on your church. Make us a living people, holy and free. Come Holy Spirit, bond of love, pour your love into our hearts now as we worship in this wonderful way that we may serve you with joy and in your peace. Come, Holy Spirit, come, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Philip. I would now like to invite the Archimandrite Abba Johannes Kebedi, administrator of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, who will read from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. I am uh, Abba Johannes from Ethiopian Orthodox Church, uh, and I am uh, very happy to be here with you, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me. And the reading is Acts chapter 28, verse 1. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heart fastened itself on his hand. When Icelanders, the Icelanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer, for though he escaped from the sea, the goodness justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fell dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their mind and said he was a god. There was an estate nearby that belonging to Pupilius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home and showed us generous hospitality for three days. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after prayer placed his hands on him and healed him. When this had happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. They honored us in many ways and when we were ready to sell, they furnished us with the supplies we needed. 
this is the word of the Lord. Now I will say a short prayer. O oh God, the Father, giver of light, the power of all, visitor of all souls, light which was before, creator of the world, the leader of life and giver of immortal happiness. Thou hast taken us out of the snares of darkness and granted us the unsearchable light. Thou hast lost us. We who believed in thee and covered us with faith. Thou art not far from thy servants, but art always with them. Thou dost not neglect the soul which supplicated thee with fear and trembling. Thou knowest all before the thoughts and examines all before the thoughts. Through thy will thou supply our needs before we ask. Thou hurts us. Thou hearest us who call upon thee without doubting. Thou art the unsearchable light and the king of the heavenly hosts, bearer of the glorious song of the archangels upon whom thou restless. O Lord, we pray thee to hear us. Grant us the unseeing word interest. We glorify thee. We thank thee and we bless thee. O Lord, we thy servants glorify thee because we depend up on D. Thank you, Abba Johannes. Ingrid and Christian Scott from Melbourne will now read the word of life on this passage that Abba Johannes has just read from the Bible, <clears throat> prepared by the Focolari movement. This word of life was chosen for the week of prayer for Christian unity. They showed us unusual kindness. The welcome they received was not rushed and impersonal, but genuinely helpful to the visitors and showed no cultural, religious or social prejudice. This could only happen through the involvement of each and every member of an entire community. The ability to accept others is part of every person's DNA because we all bear within us the image of the merciful Father. This is the case for those who have a strong Christian faith and those who do not. It was a law written in the human heart, which the word of God has brought to light and developed. From the time of Abraham, right up to Jesus' revelation, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. The Lord himself gives us strength through his grace so that our fragile will can reach the fullness of Christian love. Through this experience, Paul also teaches us to trust in God's providential intervention and to recognize and appreciate all the good we receive through the concrete love of many people who cross our path. They showed us unusual kindness. This verse from the Acts of the Apostles was proposed by Christians from various churches on the island of Malta as the motto for the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity 2020. By working together, these communities support numerous initiatives that help migrants and people in need. They distribute food, clothing and toys for children. They give English language lessons to each social institution. 
to enable social inclusion. So. They want to strengthen this capacity for acceptance, but also to nurture fellowship among Christians belonging to different churches, so as to bear witness to their shared faith. And how do we bear witness to God's love to those around us? How do we contribute to build united families, supportive cities, and truly humane societies? Bacalari founder Kiaru Lubick suggested, Jesus showed us that loving means accepting others as they are, just as he welcomed each of us. We can welcome others with their likes and dislikes, their ideas, their faults, and their diversity. We can make space in ourselves for others by overcoming prejudice, judgment, or an attitude of rejection that may be in our hearts. We give no greater glory to God than when we strive to accept our neighbours, because it's then that we lay the foundations of fellowship. Nothing gives as much joy to God as true unity among people. Unity attracts the presence of Jesus among us, and his presence transforms everything. So let us approach each neighbour, intending to welcome them with all our heart. They showed us unusual kindness. Thank you, Scott family. Now we move to Canberra and Keith Leonard from the Focolari Movement and the Reverend Tim Watson, who is Rector of Holy Cross Anglican Church Hackett in Canberra and a member of Chemin Neuf, which has a specific focus on ecumenism. Keith and Tim will share a testimony of working for Christian unity. In December 1980, Chiara Lubick, the foundress of the Focolari Movement, saw expensive Christmas decorations in the local shops. Reindeers, Father Christmases, elves, sleighs full of presents, but no Jesus. She wrote in her diary that night, if I were to be born again, I would love to have the charism to publicise the real meaning of Christmas. I would print the most beautiful Christmas cards, I would have the most impressive nativity displays. When I read this meditation of Kiara's, I decided to collect nativity sets with the idea of running annual displays to put Christ back into Christmas. By the early 2000s, I had nearly 120 nativity sets from 50 countries. I started running displays every Christmas in the local church and local school. And then in 2001, I joined up with a number of other collectors and we put on displays uh, throughout Western Victoria, from Ballarat, Ballarat, Bendigo, right up to Mildura. When we moved to Canberra in 2017, we organised a nativity display in the cathedral, Catholic Cathedral, and uh, it was very successful. There were over 2,000 who came through. But what was really in my heart was to make it an ecumenical experience. In early 2019, I met the local and newly appointed Anglican rector, the Reverend Tim Watson. He only come from England. Tim was a member of Shimon Neuf, which has a special charism to focus on ecumenism. In the course of our discussions, I mentioned my dream to start running an ecumenical nativity display. And Tim, you might take that. Well, I came here as rector just 18 months ago now. Uh, and I was very lucky to be appointed given my own history with ecumenism. I've been involved in ecumenical work for, for most of my life, I guess. Uh, but I came here to a church which actually was built as an ecumenical partnership. Holy Cross Anglican Church, where we are now, uh, is built in partnership with St. Margaret's Uniting Church, originally a Presbyterian church. Uh, we share our facilities so that the Anglicans own and operate uh, the church building and the Uniting Church owns and operates the hall. And then we collaborate, we have regular joint services. So there's a real cooperative partnership between the two churches. And historically, the churches have had excellent relationships with the Catholic Church across the road, Holy Rosary, uh, the Dominican Parish. Uh, it's, in fact, the roundabout here is known as the Holy Roundabout. Uh, but uh, some of those collaborations, which used to happen a while ago, seem to have fallen into abeyance. Uh, and when I came, a lot of people were saying, well, we used to do Christmas carols together. Isn't it a shame? Why can't we do that again? 
So uh, Keith's approach and the suggestion of doing a festival uh, was a wonderful opportunity for, for us just to say, well, you know, here's something we can do together. Uh, we can do it as a, a work of evangelism because we're trying to announce the good news of Jesus to people, but in a very gentle way, a very inclusive way. Uh, and then a number of other things came together. Well, if we're doing that, why don't we have uh, some musical activity? So we organized uh, to have a sausage sizzle with carols, uh, again, with singers from the different churches, with ministers. So I think in the end, we had six churches involved in the carols. And then we were approached by the percussion section of the Canberra Symphony Orchestra, who wanted to do a concert around Christmas. So we included that in the program too. So we ended up with a whole range of different activities, reaching out to people in the neighborhood, some of whom had never set foot in this church, uh, others who maybe had come in the past. Um, but it was an opportunity for us as Christian communities to come together across our different denominations to announce the good news about Jesus and to build community in the neighborhood. Uh, and so we had a wonderful time with that, with the project team which came together. And again, for me, one of the signs that this was the work of the Holy Spirit uh, was that in this instance, uh, things went quite easily. We came together, the vision came together, uh, and there was a sense that we were working with the, with the wind of the Spirit in this case. Thank you very much, Keith and Tim. I now pass to Judith Pimental from Melbourne to hear her experience. Thanks, Alex, and good afternoon to you all. Um, today, I would like to share with you um, an experience of unusual kindness. My name is Judith, and I'm, I'm Catholic. My husband follows the Buddhist faith. We have a very friendly neighborhood, and one of them is a family from the Greek Orthodox Church. Since the start of COVID-19, we have not seen our next door neighbors for a few weeks. In the afternoon of 19th April, which is the Greek Orthodox Easter Sunday, there was a knock on our door. It was Sophie, our next door neighbor, who came over to greet us Happy Easter with a plate of Greek biscuits made by her, baked by her daughter-in-law. My husband and I were really touched by this unusual kindness from our neighbors. A few days later, we got another knock on, on our door. It was Perry, one of Sophie's sons. He came with two plates of cake slices with cream, which he himself baked, and he thought to share them with us. We told Perry, oh, how thoughtful of them to be remembering us and sharing their delicious food with us. Sava, another son of Sophie, made bake a, a loaf of bread. Again, another knock on our door and, gave, and he gave this loaf of bread to us. You can imagine how happy we were. We're very much spoiled by our neighbors, by, they, by their unusual kindness. Will and I felt, what can we do? So on Mother's Day, we bought a long stem rose, knocked at their door, and gave it to Sophie as a gesture for our gratitude and also to greet her Happy Mother's Day. She was so touched. And also, we thought when we cook gnocchi, gnocchi we prepared some. We prepared it with our special sauce. We knocked at their door again and shared with them our special gnocchi. My husband and I told them about our unusual kindness meeting that's happening, that's happening today. And, and I told them I would like to share with them this exchange of unusual kindness at our meeting today. And I asked them, we asked them if it's okay, if we can take a photo all together so we can share it at our meeting. And they said, yes. And so we took a photo in front of their altar. And I believe Alex will show us that photo so you can see, you can see our beautiful neighbors. So there's Sophie, Sava, Perry, myself, and my husband, Will. So that, that's, that's my experience, our experience of unusual kindness, especially in these pandemic times. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. 
Now let's go to Perth to hear a short reflection from Archbishop Kay Goldsworthy from the Anglican Church. Thank you, Alex. It's really lovely to be with you all today as we give thanks to God for all God's goodness and sharing this time together. It uh, seems to me providential that I'm with you because during the week, early in, in uh, or 10 days ago, I'd been thinking about our friends from Focolare who live in Perth and uh, was just about to send an email to them to say, how are you all? and received this invitation. So I feel that the spirit was, uh, was among and between us even then. We have all seen, as we've just heard, huge numbers of stories from around the world of people showing great kindness to each other in these past few weeks and couple of months since we've been living uh, in lockdown and with the fear of, uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic around us and between us. And what I have been really astounded by is not that people have met their neighbours with fear, but that people have gone out of their way to reconsider what it means to be able to be good neighbours, good friends, kind human beings, and to actually reassess what it is that's really important for us. I think at the very heart of kindness for those of us who are followers of Jesus is that story which comes really from the Hebrew scriptures that tells of Abraham and Sarah greeting three strangers and offering them hospitality. At the Oaks of Mamre, as we read about it in Genesis 18, Abraham and Sarah allow themselves to offer hospitality in the desert place. And because of that hospitality, they had in fact been offering a welcome and kindness to angels. God graced and gifted them as a result of their action. There have been so many ways in which we have seen kindness being lived out. And each one of us could speak about how it is that God's love has been a kindness in our own lives. There is a bumper sticker which you sometimes see around Perth and, and the sort of Fremantle area. And I'm sure you see it in other parts of, of Australia and in different parts of the world, which says, practice random acts of kindness. It's a lovely bumper sticker because it always makes me smile. And I wonder what that random act of kindness might be that people who don't think much about God or who are not uh, like I am, devoted or, or committed to following the way of Jesus, how it is that they might think in their day about making a hospitable space in order to be kind to another. We are kind, of course, because of God's great kindness to us. He is making space for us in and through his love. We know that kindness is described in the letter to the Galatians as one of the fruits of the spirit. It goes with love and peace and patience and generosity and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Kindness is a simple thing and yet it can change people's lives. Simple and random acts of kindness can be for some the first greeting that they've received for some days, some weeks, or perhaps some years, in which someone has said to them, you are important and you matter. Those bigger acts of kindness that we see, the welcoming of refugees, people with nowhere to go and no homeland left in which to be safe, 
those who are caring for people who are incarcerated or in fear are all ways in which we can show the love and grace of God. We are, I think, given an opportunity right now to sharpen our minds, to strengthen our wills and to recommit ourselves to being kind to our neighbours in order that the love of God for the whole world might be better seen and better known. Thank you, Archbishop Kay. Your words lead beautifully onto our next piece, which is inspired by the Facebook group, The Kindness Pandemic, where people put up stories about how neighbours have helped each other during the COVID crisis. Inspired by this, over the last two weeks, I've been collecting stories from um, around the community, the Pokolari community in Oceania. And people have shared experiences of where they have either given themselves of, of unusual kindness or been recipients of unusual kindness. So we hope you enjoy this little short snippets of unusual kindness from around, the, from around Australia and New Zealand. <laughs> Um, we recently befriended a homeless man who lives in the park next to our apartment and we've been cooking dinner for him and taking a to him and he's been really touched and um, he loves our food. Thank you. My friends are depressed, lonely and sick. I thought how can I make them feel our love and care in this time of pandemic? I bring them some soup or cake. I will check with them at, at a distance or on the phone, making them connected. Recently, um, one of my neighbours, knowing that I like uh, silver beet, organised to make me a silver beet garden and here it is. This was an unexpected, unusual act of kindness and I felt really loved. So I always park my scooter in a place before going to work. And the other day I left my keys on my scooter and I didn't realize. So at the end of the day, I went back there and there was a lady, um, she's living like opposite the place I park and she was holding my keys. So she was very calm. Um, so no one could, could take the keys and she packed them for me all day so I was very pleased. We were preparing dinner and we'd been waiting for this pork roast and had been very well marinated anyway um, circumstances happened and we, we were able to go and give this pork roast to, to another family. Um, the next day um, we got a visit, someone just came to the door and, and left us some, some food and it was so much. The person who left us, um, who had brought us all this food, actually received a hamper from his work um, because of the kindness that he showed at work. And so we thought, look at all this love that is being spread around. A neighbour cares full time for her housebound quadriplegic husband. She could only leave him alone for very short periods and was having difficulty finding staples. She was especially desperate for toilet paper. My wife happened to phone me from the supermarket at this exact moment. I explained the situation and she went to look for toilet paper, but there was none. So she tried two other local supermarkets, all without luck. So when she finally got home, she dug four rolls out from our modest reserves for me to take to the neighbour. The lady was very grateful for the supplies and food vouchers that we were able to deliver. I work in a hospital as a nurse. During the coronavirus period, often people have donated food and gifts to the nurses at work. One day, since most of the nurses are women, we all receive boxes of makeup and lipstick. I am not married, but accepted the box thinking it could be a good gift. When I saw the cleaner, I offered it to her. 
She was so touched as she had been going without to support her family as much as possible. She accepted the gift with joy. Sean and Teresa Bevan are from Napier, New Zealand. They will lead us in prayer. Please join in the responses. Spirit of love, come upon this assembly and dwell among us. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit of unity, show us the path towards Christian unity. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit of hospitality, teach us to welcome each other and especially strangers. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit of compassion, instill within us an attitude of respect to all those whom we meet. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit of hope, open our hearts to embrace our ecumenical journey. Come, Holy Spirit. Still in New Zealand, we hear from Father Jerry Burns, Vicar General for the Catholic Archdiocese of Wellington. Kia ora tātou, tēnā koutou katoa. Those are two greetings from uh, very traditional uh, among the Indigenous people of New Zealand. Kia ora means may you have life, so I wish you life to all and uh, especially at this time of Pentecost. Tēnā koutou uh, seems a much simpler greeting. It just, just means it's you it, in the plural. What's so special about that? It's you. Of course it's us, you might be saying. <laughs> There's nothing special about that. But actually, it's a very formal greeting, meaning that's you in all your specialness, your depth, uh, your heritage. You might even say that's, I recognize the spirit breathing in you. I recognize God in you. So when they say tēnā koutou or tēnā koe, tēnā koroa, whatever the number of people they're greeting, is they're, they're saying, I'm greeting the deepest part of you, including those who have gone before you, your ancestors. So I greet you uh, in that form as well. One of the images of this time is about the Spirit breathing life, new life into the disciples. Uh, and that's a very special part of Pentecost. And I think it's a special part of what we're talking about here today, too. Uh, the showing of unusual kindness. I'll come back to that reading because I think it has a lot to tell us. But actually, I've been just over the last couple of days grieving over that scene that we have seen from the United States of a, a black man having his neck knelt on by a police officer and dying in front of the cameras. Just such a tragic end to his life and an unjust end to his life. And of course there's riots going on and I'm not suggesting that's, that's the way we respond, but his last words have really stayed with me. Uh, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Such a simple thing. We all do every so often. Uh, we don't even know we're doing it. We're breathing. And he says, I can't breathe. And it's symbolic. I think of lots of things in our world where by action or omission, by commission or omission, uh, we've stopped our world. We stop one another from being able to breathe. Uh, whether it's just the way we ignore each other or don't treat each other kindly, um, or more seriously stop our planet from breathing by the way we live and the way we, uh, our economic systems are shaped. So helping each other breathe, and we, we share breath uh, in some way, in some form, all human beings are sharing this oxygen uh, in which we live. So we do share breath with one another, 
but helping each other breathe properly, helping our planet breathe properly, I think can be a fruit of um, the, the movement of the spirit because it's the spirit, the spirit of Jesus that breathes life into the first disciples, breathes life into us. And we're reflecting today, especially on that wonderful text uh, from the Acts of the Apostles, uh, when the people of Malta uh, breathe new life into Paul and his companions who were shipwrecked. And I think that text has a lot to tell us. Uh, of course, it's got a particular application in the Mediterranean today with so many people trying to cross the Mediterranean and their boat sinking or, or being wrecked in some way and people looking for salvation. So we know there's lots of people still in that area where Paul was and all around the world today, migrants, refugees, but wider than that, seeking new life, seeking new ways to, ways to breathe. And just in our own simple ways, uh, the examples have already been given in this, in this hour, show us ways to help one another breathe. As churches, I think we're all facing a rough sea. Perhaps some of us are feeling a bit shipwrecked too. But it, it, as we work together, we can breathe new life into one another. So we can share, we can help each other to breathe by our sharing of gifts and our mutual listening to each other. Uh, as churches, but also to those people who are in need. So I think we can take three things from that text that we heard earlier. One, be confident in Jesus Christ. Two, uh, even if we don't know uh, how, we can be confident that we will reach a safe shore, just as Paul did and his companions. And we listen to one another, not just as individuals, but as groups a joint listening, not just an individual listening. May the Spirit breathe life into us all. Kia ora. Thank you, Father Jerry. We will now have a meditative prayer by Chiara Lubick, founder of the Focolari Movement, read by Brooke Rubino from Perth. Jesus, we turn to you, alive, risen among us. You are among us, Jesus, because we are united in your name. We love one another in you. We are here to take a step forward in unity among our different churches. We are conscious of everything that has happened in past centuries, terrible centuries, which wounded your heart. And for this, we ask your forgiveness. We speak too for all those Christians who have gone before us. Jesus, we have an immense faith in your love and mercy. And we know that your love and your mercy overcome all that has happened in the past and all that will be in the future. We abandon ourselves trustfully to your love. We are certain that if we turn to you in trust, you will forget everything, like a mother who, from the love she has in her heart, doesn't remember her children's failures because you don't only forgive, but you also forget. Allow us to be your instruments, together with many others who work for unity. We know that if there isn't anyone who sows, there will be no one who reaps. Probably many of us in our lifetime will not see that beautiful one church which you founded but we hope to see it from heaven. In the meantime, allow us to live these years which we still have, so that all may be one. Amen. And we say together, as we almost end, come to the end of our service together, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your, be name. your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this ecumenical prayer. We hope you have been inspired by this time together and we remain united. We finish with a song by Jen Verde, which leads us into Pentecost and asks the Holy Spirit to raise us up, clothe us in endless love and give us new birth. Scatter us as many seeds, sowing fraternity throughout the earth. After the song, we will unmute the microphones so we can get a chance to greet each other and share the peace. stand and in all our nothingness we turn to you who alone know every heart and can read each hidden part all of it true grant the pardon that we seek and with mercy give your peace and your forgiveness Please forgive each and all our trespasses, wash them away. Lack of love on others' part, wounds too deep for words to start, and tell the pain. Now the pardon that you bring, we in turn are offering to one another. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Our Father, help us to forgive each other, not out of forgetfulness, weakness or indifference, not because serious wrongs are not important or because bad things are good, but with great courage and freedom to welcome others just as they are, just as you accept every single person in spite of their faults. Now's the time to make a new beginning Time to show forgiveness Speaking words of truth To shine bright as stars which light the heavens Shining in the darkness We are turn to you In unity Do not let yourselves be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. Our Father, give us new eyes in the heart of a mother towards everyone. Give us that mercy which covers everything, trusts, believes and hopes everything. Grant us the grace of a complete amnesty in our hearts, of mutual universal forgiveness, that you may open up for all of us the possibility of a new beginning, a future where wrongs no longer have the last word. Now's the time to make a new beginning Time to show forgiveness Speaking words of truth To shine bright as stars which light the heavens Shining in the darkness We are turned to you in unity Holy Spirit fall Raise us up, clothe us in your endless love. Give 
Peace be with you, everyone. 